Hello YouTube! Recently, an important object was discovered by scientists of the Russia's Kazan Federal University at a gypsum deposit. The object that was found there is presumably of extraterrestrial origin. The sample found um, by a student of the Kazan University, Klavdia Petrenko, in the Kamsko Ustinsky deposit attracted the attention of scientists with the unusually dense micro inclusions in that object. The scientific team studied iron rich microspheres and microparticles contained in the gypsum rock. A preliminary study of the composition show that their main component is iron. Using a set of methods for microanalysis, micro CT, XRF, SEM, EDS, and Raman spectroscopy, uh, they studied various possibilities of the, their origin and came to the conclusion that micro-inclusions from the Verkhnia Kazansky sublayer have an extraterrestrial genesis, according to Rail Kadyrov, associate professor of the Department of Region Geology and Minerals of the Institute of Geology of Oil and Gas Technologies of the Kazan Federal University. The scientists justify the conclusion based on the similarity of the microspheres found both with the diagenetically altered I-type cosmic spherules and with meteorite ablation spherules, the finds of which were reported more than once in modern and ancient deposits. Extraterrestrial objects that fall on the planet from space combine certain features – spherical morphology, dimensions, dendritic, textures having a lattice or cellular appearance, large subspheric cavities representing the former position of weathered metal nuclei, irregular networks of cavities representing vesicles from the residual trapped volatile gases, as well as iron-enriched mineralogy, characteristic of magnetite. The detected microparticles and microspherules, or small spheres, have undergone diagenetic changes over the past two million years, based on the extra extraordinary concentration of extraterrestrial microspheres and microparticles very close to them in composition, concentrated in a thin dolomite layer. Scientists of the Kazan Federal University have suggested their origin from meteor ablation, the process of destruction of the surface of a meteor body when moving in the atmosphere. Scientists assume that the meteor body was destroyed when moving in the atmosphere, which occurred over the studied area 272.95 million years ago. It would be great to know how the object was destroyed. Let me remind you that our planet had undergone severe mass extinction event in the middle Permian, which lasted from 272 to 260 million years ago. But what was the source of the extinction? We can only surmise. I will keep my audience updated as to the continuous research of the Kazan object in Russia. Now, China's geology is ideal for finding the remains of marine reptiles from ancient oceans. A newly classified fossil discovered in China in 2016 gives clues to how life in the oceans recovered from a mass extinction about 250 million years ago. Sclerocormus parviceps, as it is called, belongs to the Ichthyosaurus family, a group of very large marine reptiles who lived between 250 million years ago and about uh, 90 million years ago, around the time of the earliest dinosaurs. The reptile is an early relative of the Ichthyosaurus, a large group of marine reptiles that swam at the time of the dinosaurs. With, with its tiny toothless head, the creature is something of curiosity, say scientists. The specimen suggests 
marine reptiles evolved quickly after the event of extinction. Previous evidence has suggested that it, it took a long time for animals in the seas to bounce back. The ichthyosaurus are a large group of marine reptiles that were common in the Jurassic and the Cretaceous periods. Most were dolphin-like in shape with streamlined bodies and long snouts. But the new animal is something of a mystery. With its short snout, long whip-like tail and thick ribcage. And while many ichthyosaurus had teeth for catching prey, Sclerocormus lacked teeth and probably sucked up food. The creature fills the gap in the fossil record between primitive marine reptiles and the more advanced ichthyosaurus, which dominated the oceans for millions of years. Scientists do not have many marine reptile fossils from that period, so this specimen is important because it suggests that there is diversity that has not been uncovered yet. This ichthyosaurus forms, um, ichthyosaurus and close relatives, seem to have evolved very quickly in short bursts of lots of change and leaps and bounds. This Scleroformus is one of the most surprising marine reptiles. Measuring 1.6 meters in total length, it was one of the largest marine vertebrates of the time. It appeared after the mass extinction, which was at the end of the Permian <coughs> and quickly became extinct too. Very interesting to find out <coughs> more about this um, animal, I should say. I don't know how, but um, I'm sure the scientists will keep trying. And since we speak of meteorites in China, let me tell you something else. Meteorites are pieces of stone and metal that fall and land on Earth. Most meteorites come from broken pieces in the asteroid belt or bits that were left over in the formation of the solar system. Meteorites start out in space as meteoroids which are often just grains of dust or dirt. Many of these specks of dust originate from tails of comets and rain down as the Earth's orbit passes through or near the path of a comet. When a meteoroid enters the Earth's atmosphere, it becomes what we call a meteor. Friction with the air causes it to heat up and dissolve, creating the glowing streak of light we associate with shooting stars. Most meteors vaporize about 50 miles above the Earth's surface. If, however, a meteor is large enough to survive the plunge to Earth and actually hits the ground, it earns the title of meteorite. Made of either metal, iron and nickel, or stone, meteorites are usually pieces of some bigger body. They can even be pieces of other planets or moons. Large meteorites colliding into a planet or moon can eject so much debris that pieces escape the body's gravity into space. This is how Martian meteorites have ended up here on our planet. A massive space rock, one that could rank as one of the largest meteorites ever recovered, was found in a remote and mountainous region in northwest China, according to news reports from the year 2011. I have not heard much about it since then, but I know about the area of the discovery and one day I will tell you about very strange objects found there and the possible connection to extraterrestrial civilizations of antiquity. The huge and oddly shaped rock was found in the Altai Mountains in China's Xinjiang Uyghur province. Bao Ling Zhang, a meteorite specialist at the Beijing Planetarium, led a small team up to uh, 9,500 foot or 2,900 meter summit to investigate reports of the supposed meteorite. This is a huge iron meteorite, Zheng 
said in a footage from China Central Television. It may be the second largest iron meteorite, which can cause a sensation in China and also attract attention from the world's meteorite fields. It comes from outside solar system, and it is of great appreciating value and of more scientific value. The large brown stone juts out from beneath a larger granite slab, and the portion above ground measures about 7.5 feet, 2.3 meters, long and half as wide. Zhang estimates that the meteorite's math, mass could range between 25 to 30 tons, which would make it one of the largest meteorites known. If so, this space rock would surpass the current largest one in China, a 28-ton meteorite that was discovered in 1898 in the same region. The Xinjiang discovery could represent a very exciting find for the scientific community if the rock can be confirmed as a meteorite. Since most meteorites were formed close to about 4.6 billion years ago when the solar system was formed, any newly discovered meteorites, regardless of their size, have the potential to provide scientists with some unique insights into the formation and earliest history of our solar system. The photo taken on July 17, 2011 and featured in People's Daily shows experts measuring a giant meteorite found in the, um, again, Altai Prefecture, North China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. The picture of the Xinjiang rock that have been released so far appear to show good promise of it being an iron meteorite. The above Earth part of the giant meteorite is 2.2 meters long and 1.25 meters tall with a width of 1.2 meters. That's an average data. Its weight is estimated to be as 25 tons. And while the G, uh, Xinjiang finding is quite large, actually the largest known meteorite to date has a mass of roughly 60 tons and was found in Namibia. Zhang and his team also found names scratched into the stone's surface, indicating that some people in the area were likely aware of the unusual rock's existence. The etchings also exposed the iron-nickel composition, according to Zhang. Further analysis should help determine whether this iron meteorite and the one found in 1898 are related, or if it is merely a coincidence that they were both found in this remote region of China. It was also unknown when or how the massive rock will be removed from its current location to be studied. I am sure in the last 10 years it was either removed, secluded, and definitely knowing China scientists, they have been studying this massive rock. Look, there are two important mentions of what I told you, Namibia and awareness of people in the area of the meteorite. I have told you in my other videos about Namibia, um, about this country's unusual and really paranormal phenomenon. What I'll tell you in my future video will be about its fascinating meteorites, how some indigenous people interacted with them, according to a Russian big game hunter and explorer I met decades ago in southern Africa. And I also have to share with you amazing discoveries in China, Xinjiang uh, area and beyond. And I, I will make that video soon. And I do ask you, if you like my research, please support me through the links you can find in the description of this channel. Please tell others about my channel. Please subscribe. And as always, thank you for your attention.